Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly update on my Dyson Sphere program up, uh, progress. And as ever, the channel is sponsored by Trefoil.be, so check them out if you want to get a uh, discount on your uh, next gaming server um, hosting systems. And um, well, let's have a look at what I've been up to. So, there's been a few things. But probably the big headline is this mass is this belt running all the way down the middle of my uh, my bus here. Um, and I got a bit lazy with this one. I just decided I'd, I'd lift it up high and just run it over the top of absolutely everything else. I suppose I could have used um, could have used logistic systems for it, but instead I thought, let's now nah, let's just run a nice long belt because it'll give us a buffer as well. And so this is purple science. So that's uh, this this is quite exciting. Big new um, big new update there. There've been a few other things as well, but let's take a look at the purple science first. So making purple science is as 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 with basically everything else science related requires the the uh, the ma these matrix uh, facilities like this, and we're using these. I've been able to uh, bring in processors which I was already making off, off on the on the bus, which is convenient. And I also needed these uh, particle broadband things. Now they were they weren't too bad as far as I remember. There was a lot of sort of pulling things over on the bus and then having to boost the uh, production of things. So over here we've got the, these take in. Um, uh, carbon nanotubes, crystal silicon, and plastic. Well, I'm making the. Uh, ooh, what, where, where am I making all of this? Well, the crystals are coming along here, and then they're being. I've just put them on the bus because you never know. I might need them later, but I probably will need them later. So they're coming along here, in in, in, in through the splitter, and to, to be to be processed here. The plastic is is being made over. Ooh, way over there, and there's a, there's a processing facility over there. So we've got a nice nice supply of plastic coming from the the oil processing that was being done for Yellow Science, which also no, it doesn't require plastic. Okay, I thought I thought it did. Um, and over here we've got the uh, carbon nanotubes being made. They are carbon nanotubes, aren't they? Uh, yes, carbon nanotubes. They, these are made out of plastic and sorry, out of no, out of graphene and titanium, um, both of which were in the, in this area because we're making the graphene sheets here. Now I have increased the production of graphene quite a bit in order to have enough for the uh, for the carbon nanotubes, and that does seem to be enough. So this is this is working quite nicely. We're getting getting supplies through there, and I had to put in some extra water pumps, but you know, that, that was that was easy, easy enough. This is this is running pretty well. Well, we do have a bit of a shortage of refined oil coming in here, as you can tell by the way the uh, the belt isn't backed up. So I think I should probably think quite seriously about increasing the, the flow of that. And that's going to be a bit tricky because the oil production over there is already a bit of a tangled mess, and I've shown you that in previous episodes. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna sort of try not to look at it because it's it, it's just horrible. <laughs> maybe maybe there'll be ways to fix that. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll see what we can do. So yeah, that's all, all coming in over here, and we're, so we're able to make the science. Now, I think I need to put in a bit of a boost on the um, production of the circuit. Well, I've got a second machine making second machine over here making the processors now, so there's a, a little bit of shenaniganry went on here in order to get this in place, but it, it wasn't too bad. They, um, the production does seem to actually be pretty much keeping up, he says, as, the, as it starts to disappear off into the distance there. Maybe it's not quite keeping up. It seems to be a little bursty. We'll, we'll, we'll worry about that another time. So yes, that's working. I don't think I've extended things a great deal down here, no. Um, but there are two other things that I want to talk about that are both quite interesting. Um, I'm not doing that over there, so that's, that's less interesting. So, over somewhere, over here, yes. This is a, so I've now got two of these towers. This one is a big logistics tower, which is for um, interplanetary and interstellar logistics. And this one is a small one that does the local logistics. So, as you can see, there's some these little logistics craft are flying in from elsewhere on the same planet, and they're carrying stone. I'm sorry, no, not. They're carrying coal. And you can tell by looking at them because they've got they paint they paint themselves black and they have a symbol of coal on the top of them. Uh, except whereas when they're empty, they're painted white and don't have a symbol. But nice, nice, easy to tell what's in them. So what this this is for because everything around here, it, or at least a lot of the stuff I'm doing, is requiring enormous quantities of this um, energized carbon. So, in order to get this working sufficiently quickly, I've got more of the carbon being brought in, but then the belts don't have enough throughput. Now, there's a couple of possible solutions to this. The obvious one, and the one I sort of thought of first, because I'm used to Factorio, is to replace these belts with a slightly better belt. So in here we've got belt 1, belt 2, belt 3, um, which take 6 per second, 12 per second, so twice as fast, and 30 per second, so um, a full five times as fast as this one. And that might have been a sensible way to do it, but they require quite a lot of exotic ingredients to make, and I, I, I haven't bothered to do the, to do the advanced ones yet, so, um, oops, so we're not doing it like that. However, another machine I've, I've recently discovered and started playing with is the, are these stacker things. And what these do is they take in 
the, the whatever actually let's look at let's look at these ones over here because they've got better supply so this is the supply that's, that's coming out of the um out of the logistics station so as you can see we're bringing loads of it over it's got almost five thousand in it and it's, it's got well it's got four and a half thousand in it and another 500 on the way so there's lots and lots available here that's being fed out down these three belts here into these machines and these are stack well they call them calls them pilers and if you look closely you can see that the coal that's going in on this side of all of them is a standard coal box what we, what we used to think what we used to see and then coming out the other side if you look closely you can see how they're stacked up in pairs so each of these is worth twice one of these and that means you can immediately double the throughput of the belt and if you try a bit harder if you then you then feed that into another stacker you can double it again so we've got these four high piles going around and that means we've got four times as much stuff going down the belt so we've got these these are all stacked stacked to a height of four going out this way um, now the ones going along here are not these are only stacked to a height of two which is because there's not actually sufficient coming through here um, so what I should probably do is pull up a bit of this and and then put in another one of these like that then I can get some more belts out of my pockets link that one to there that one to there and this one round here and into there as well and this will now merge those so we'll have the fours coming in here and apparently just stopping dead I'm not quite sure I don't know there's oh, oh there's, there's a priority set on here that's why unset the pri unset the priority unset the priority third time looking right and we're now pulling in from both sides so that means that some of what's going down here is now that is now the four high stacks that we're seeing from um, from here coming through and then the other way We've now got a bit more um, back pressure on it, and we're, so we're getting double high stacks being produced, which is uh, which is which is better because these these are only trying to stack to two. I haven't I haven't put an additional stacker in, although I probably could put one in in, in this gap in, in the space here and, and get it as four high all the way along. So the interesting thing about these things, as I, as as you might have or might not have noticed, so let's let's undo the the um, the improvements I just did. Let's get rid of uh, let's get rid of a piece of belt from there for, for a moment. What you'll see here is as, as the um, as the coal flows in, if there's a bit of back pressure on on, on, on the belt, then it'll it'll produce it'll start producing, keep producing the double high ones. But if there's no back pressure, which I'm trying to demonstrate here, and it doesn't really seem to be happening, um, you can also get it so that it's produce only producing the double highs when there's enough when there's sufficient inputs. Maybe I need to oh here we go. There's a bit of a gap coming up. So when there's a bit of a gap or gaps on the input like this then there's not enough being brought through for it to make the stacks so it doesn't bother it just passes them straight through rather than rather than sending out a double stack every other time and halving the amount on the belt it just passes them straight through you need to have a little bit of back pressure on it in order to get enough in order to get it to 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 hang on to the stuff for long enough to actually do what it's supposed to be doing and start stacking them up so now that we've nice we've got a bit of back pressure in there now we're getting at least some of the double high ones and as this gets a bit more pushed back to start to get all double high ones so they're, they're, they're great except that they don't work quite as well as I would like them to sometimes you get sometimes you sometimes they let single single blocks go through when there isn't isn't sufficient input so we then pass these down here the all these all these quad high stacks down into the system down here and then these and then each time one of these machines runs each time one of the inserters runs it takes a full stack into the machine which then has to be processed one at a time and then passed out the other side so we'll see that we've got nine seven drops down to five oh, and then goes straight back up to nine again because it's taken an entire stack in so it's keeping it, 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 it essentially quadruples how effective the, the input sorters are as well and then we've got them coming out on the other side over here and feeding them into pilers as well so we've then got double high piles there and all of the stuff going down here is also doubled so again once again I've doubled the throughput of this belt simply by by using these stackers and, um, and putting twice as much on there. And not only, as I was saying, not only does it double the throughput of this belt, it doubles how effective the inserters are that are loading the next set of machines along. And that's really, really powerful because one of the problems I've had with making science packs is that you need to drag in a lot of a lot of whatever it is that goes into them. So having the um, having them stacked up means that the means that you make your inserters a lot more effective, and you get twice as much being put into the into the machines each time they run, or four times as much if you quad stacked it. Um, and then so you actually then you have the resources going into the um, the tower of labs that you need in order to make the uh, whatever it is that you're trying to make. <clears throat> now over here it doesn't seem to be quite so much of an issue because the stuff that's going in is a bit less 
high density. But overall, yeah, it's 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 quite important. It's, it's it's going to be a big boon, I think, to have twice as much being loaded in every single time. You can see up here, I've done the same thing with the stone. These are all stacks of four coming in, so this belt is now nice and backed up. If if we're having stacks single stacks coming along here, this belt would be flowing four times as fast obviously um, and that would mean we'd be struggling a lot more with the throughput and this, thing, this single belt probably wouldn't be enough <coughs> in order to get this working as well I've um, opened some additional stone mines over here so we've got this one patch over here producing stone but I've got four miners running off it and they're all pulling out and they're, they're all feeding into stackers in the same way so we've got these 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 two here are coming straight out of these, these mines and they're doubling up the stacks um, we've then got this one quadrupling it, or doubling it again to get quadruple. This one's getting quadrupled as well. Around here we've got the same stacker, 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 stacker. And then we've, so we've got quad stacks being fed into this one from, and this one from all sides. So we just know that all of the stone that goes through is going to be stacked up to that, that, that full height. Now at some point in the future these will start to run out. It's probably going to be a while, but they will eventually start to run out. And at that point we might find that we're getting smaller piles being passed through. But for now it's running very, very nicely. And I did discover, because some people kind of to tell me, that when you're placing a, a mining drill, you can um, you can see how much resource is going to be picking up by, by sort of just hovering the mouse like this. So I'm getting four stacks there at this point, so it's 132 per minute. There would only be one stack if I could even place it there, which is 33 per minute. And you can rotate them to get um, to choose the best place. But you can also hold down shift and rotate them, and then you get free rotation. You can put them exactly where you want. And that's allowed me to get slightly better output out of each out, out of these mines and that's why they're at funny angles and you can do and you get funny things going on with the belts as well and I've got some other places where the belts are doing some um, non-orthogonal moves should we say so some, some, some slightly it's a slightly illegal belt pad, belt moves there that just look a bit uh, or slightly cursed belt moves should we say over here we can see that the um, the oil refineries are running well they're running as fast as the oil input is going so it seems that actually the reason that I was running out of um, running out of the oil, the refined oil over there isn't anything to do with the refining process it's to do with the input so it looks like I'm going to need to put in some more oil mines and what I'll probably do is put in another, I was going to say I'll put in another one of these logistics towers, I probably won't actually I'll probably use this logistics tower and have some additional belts coming out of it, um, maybe on this side, maybe out the back and feed them all over to all over here, maybe with stacking maybe not, we'll, we'll, see, how, we'll see how it feels um, in order to shove a lot more oil into the system over here to get these to get these refineries running faster and therefore get everything moving a bit more effectively and have all of the resources we need for that. So that's purple science, massive long belt going all the way across here. In fact, let, let's show off how just how bad this belt is. I, I was getting a little bit frustrated with the spaghetti at this point, so rather than trying to put it onto the um, onto the bus in a nice way, I just I just went full 3D on it, and because. I mean, you might as well when you're playing when you're playing a game that lets you play in three dimensions, mind you. So this belt just goes up and up and up and up till it's above everything else on the bus, and then just flies all the way down here at this height, and then goes in over here. So yeah, it it works nicely. It it's a bit <laughs> ridiculous, and it's it, it's spoiling all of the um, all of the the nice sort of themes and things I had set up. But it works, so I'm basically happy with it. It's actually going above the yellow belt for most of its run because I knew there was going to be plenty of space there because of the yellow belt was underneath it. So this brings us on to the third exciting thing that I've done in the in this um, in, in in the last stream. So. When, um, one of the things that, that people that I've, I've been made aware of, and I think I, I sort of vaguely knew about it, but I've been re made aware of it again, is the uh, spray coater and pro proliferator. And this is sort of this is Dyson Sphere's programs, Dyson Sphere programs answer to Factorio modules. So instead of making modules that you put in a machine in order to make it get more output from each input you put in, or to run faster, or to be more environmentally friendly, use less power, that sort of things. Instead, you have a system where you have these spray booths and these you fill them up with uh, with this green paint stuff and then as anything goes through on the belt underneath them you can see yeah as, as these come through you can see them spraying it with the with the green paint and if you look closely on the sides of the things that are coming out you'll see these have got a pair of arrows on the side that's because I've just gone straight in with mark 2 paint rather than mark 1 paint because why not it wasn't it wasn't particularly expensive so yeah we've got all of these now have these arrows on them which means they are they've been coated with them with the mark 2 paint and this means 
that you get certain boosts to it. So if everything that goes into a system is coated, if, if only some of the stuff that goes in is painted, then it's just a waste of the paint. You don't get any bonuses from it, I, I believe. But if you've got everything painted with Mark II paint, then you get two proliferator points. It means the machine runs 50% faster, you get a 20% boost to productivity, and a 70% increase in power consumption. So this is essentially a combination of speed modules and productivity modules. So I thought, right, well, we'll, f we'll follow the standard rules for this sort of game. The first, th always the first thing you want to boost with productivity and apparently speed is your um, is, is your science production is, is your science actual actual science labs so what I've done here is, is that so that's why on here on the input to the um, to, 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 to this I've got them painting all of the all of the modules as they go in here that, that's working that's working fine happy with this and this means that we're now only using well two or th two and a half to three of the um, of the of the science labs here and we are rather limited by yellow science so we did just about have enough yellow science before but now because these are running faster we, do, we don't. I'm pretty sure I don't have any hard evidence for this because it's really hard to measure but I think that this is now producing, doing a little bit, is, is now doing 20% more science per pack that goes in so each time these run hopefully it's doing 1.2 sciences per, per pack otherwise I've, I've wasted all of this and it's not doing any, it's not doing any good and, it's, and we're just wasting an enormous amount of power. Um, it's hard to be sure but I think it should. I think it should be giving me that. Bo that's a suitable boost, and getting me more um, more science done. Now it's a bit hard to tell because if we look in here, it says um, there are some items that don't get the effect of extra product, but only get speed up or other effects. For example, um, research and it's research mode of the Matrix Labs produces extra hashes. Now I'm not 100% sure what this means. I don't know whether that means it does more research per pack. Or whether the hashes are something different. In fact, give me a moment. I'm going to do. A, I'm going to. I'm going to Google this. Right. The unofficial Dyson Sphere program wiki says that proliferated research matrices will produce bonus hashes when used in research without increasing the rate they are consumed at, effectively reducing the cost of a research. So I'm going to take that to mean that we are doing research faster. We are doing getting more research out of each one of these packs that comes in than we would if we weren't doing this. So this is this is working. This is working as intended and as 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 I, I would hope and I would plan. So good basically. You'll also notice I've left an extra rail in here. This is because at some point in the future I will be producing green science packs as well and I thought I might as well leave somewhere to have it, have it all set up in advance for, for, for them to work for that to work and, be, and, be, and basically just be ready. I'm also, because the idea amused me, I'm also paint. Uh, so in order to make the Mark II paint, you make the Mark I paint, which is just made out of coal. Then you make the Mark II paint, which is made out of Mark I paint plus titanium crystals. Um, but I thought, it, but it, it amused me to. Oh, actually, <laughs> I was going to say it amused me to to to, uh, to paint the paint. Um, but I've painted the Mark I paints, um, and so uh, to, to, when they're going into, into here. But I haven't painted the crystals that are going in, so actually this hasn't helped. I'm going to need to put in another one of these painter painter majiggers um, somewhere for these titanium crystals to be uh, painted. Now these things are fairly narrow, so I suspect to do this I would just be able to pull out a little, let's pull out a little bit of this belt, and let's have. Um, I'm going to need a belt that comes along here like this. Can I then put one of one of the no? Who's it told? Yeah, one of these. I'd have to put it there. Okay. So I'd need to then shenanigan this belt <laughs> round here, then down. Uh, is that doing? Yes. Oh no, can't go. Um. Okay. No, this, this is going to be complicated. I'd need to. I'll need, I would need to pass this belt through here so it, so it would it would give this this the paint as well and then I need to somehow shenanigan this around here to drop down and go into the back of here so yes that's something I think I'll probably do on stream rather than now because yeah I'm not going to save this anyway so there's no point right so that's that's all good and well but in order to get a bit because as you can see I don't have remotely enough um, yellow signs coming through here so what I need to do is I need to boost the supply of that and I think the best way to do that is going to be to paint all of the inputs to this as well. So we just shove in um, painting. Well, we'd remove this. So we'd loop these. 
yeah, we, we'd, we'd put a painter on here and a, a loop this belt around here and have a painter on here as well. So we get we get all of these painted on the way in. And that will, of course, increase the amount of them, the amount of stuff that's being consumed. So we're going to need to add on up here. Or alternative, and, and or, or, um, or possibly both, um, start painting the inputs for those as well. So these machines will run past these. It, essentially, I suspect, in the end, I'm going to want to have all of the raw resources painted. But the problem is... If you paint the raw resources, you'll still need to then paint the things they're made out of. So I'm going to need to have an enormous quantity of these painting booths, basically everywhere. <laughs> so, for example, we'd, I, I, I might start painting the inputs for this. So, the, um, but we'd still need to paint these cubes over there in the science area when they come out. But then, in order to, if I'm going to paint these, and that'll pull them through a bit faster. So I might as well have. Then at that point, I feel like I might as well paint all of the inputs for this as well. So I'll paint. So there's there's no point in painting just painting the titanium crystals on the outside because then you need. You'd also then want to paint both of these and, and so on. So it just sort of works its way back. And so I think it's a thing where you'll work your way back from the final products rather than starting with the um, the input ingredients and working down. Um, that said, if you do if you do start off with an with an input ingredient that's just being turned into one thing, I could I could do that. So over here somewhere, for, for example, I could paint the the iron ore that's coming along here. The, the iron ore that's going in here because that's the iron ore only as far as I'm aware gets turned into um, iron plates and magnets so these machines would run faster and would have better productivity so I think this yeah putting putting in a um, painter on here would be quite a good would be quite a good thing because it would just produce more iron and the same with the copper and probably the same with the oil actually yes that could be quite good for the oil so yeah, there's definitely pot some potential for putting it on the on um, on the raw materials, as long as they're raw materials that just go straight into a single machine in order to be de to be dealt with, and you're not just pump and you're not pumping loads of and you're not using it in half a dozen different places where it'll then be mixed with other raw materials as well. Yeah, there's some sense in that, I think. So yeah, that'll be that'll be something to something to something to play with in the in the next stream and to sort of to think about and just to try and try and make sure that I'm not wasting the paint. I mean the, the paint's fairly cheap, so it doesn't really matter if I waste a bit of it. But might as well try to try to be efficient about all of this. Okay, so that that's going to be an interesting thing to play with. I'm kind of looking forward to, to messing around with that on the next stream because it's it's weird and different and it's very very different to what I'm used to from Factorio. So therefore, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I think that's pretty much all I have to tell you about this time. I've talked about getting logistics up and running with the uh, logistics towers. I've talked about making purple science. I've talked about stacking things up on the belts. And that, that is really quite nice because then, this, as you can see, this stone that's coming along here and this um, energised carbon that's coming through here. Uh, is all then being it's all being fed into these machines at a higher rate and it, so over here for example yeah the the energized carbon that's going in for red science production it's all going in at twice the rate so if we did have if we were using the red science at a really high rate perhaps because we we're doing a research that only used the first two then we'd have these being loaded in really quickly it would just work so much better so that that would be that'd be great um as it is, I think we just need to paint these so they run a bit faster. But obviously, I need to worry about the yellow first because that's the one that's currently that's currently the biggest shortage of. So I talked about that. I have also I've gone out and set up I've set up some extra coal mines, and the coal mines are quite easy to set up now. And in sort of the best spirits of LTN, uh, which this, these are almost almost similar, these are quite similar to. You can come over here. You can drop in some mining drills like this. See, we're pulling out lots of um, lots of coal. I say lots of coal. There's three drills. They're, they're they're not very well mixed. It's not. It's not very even. What I should really have done is run, um, have three belts of coal running into this separately. But this is basically full anyway, so it is coming in fast enough. It doesn't matter. Um, we've got as much as we need being produced here. And then the yeah, then these these little logistics bots coming in, grabbing it from here and flying it over to, to this one. And I think there's another yes, there's another coal mine in exactly the same way over here. This one again, completely full. That's why all of these have stopped. Here's another another one of my non-orthogonal belts going going over here. And here I have done three separate belts feeding in separately. So I think I probably did this one afterwards, and uh, I thought it through a little bit more effectively. But between them, they're easily bringing over in easily enough uh, of the of the um, of the coal to this this station here. The, 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 the system is just running happily. So I don't need to do any other any other funny business with this. This is just working nicely. So happy with that. Oh, interesting. The um, the amount of purple science available is going down quite noticeably as the science runs, because probably because each of the subsequent science packs takes more more time to make it. So 
the blue i've only got one tower making blues i do have two towers making reds but only one of them is actually running at any level although it's yeah no it's not running flat out the yellow is running flat out and they've all been used up the purple there was more of a buffer because they're produced all the way over here and maybe i was doing a different research before that didn't use the purples but as we're running we're using them. We're using them all up at the same rate. The and the, uh, the the purples are being produced absolutely. I was going to say absolutely flat out, but we don't seem to actually have any inputs here. So this is this is not running very nicely. We're going. I'm going to need to go in and make and improve the the throughput of these of these um, broadband whatever they were called uh, particle broadband cables. So that's going to need, to need need a bit of work on that. But it's kind of working. It might. Yeah, I reckon there's probably enough on the on the belt to to finish this this research at least before the um, before it runs out. But yeah, so I'm going to need to go and speed that up, and I might do that through just painting things and getting more and getting more inputs on on uh, coming in over here. And we shall see. Why are you so slow? Well, I, I, I can't tell because I'm in map mode and because my robot's all the way over here. Let's go over and have a quick look. Okay, it's not sad. It's just taking a long time to. Oh, this one's. Why are you sad? You... Oh, you're not going. Ah, there's a shortage of plastic. That's why. That's why there's a problem here. I need to make. I need. I've got a shortage of plastic, and I've got a shortage of plastic because I've got a shortage of oil, and I've got a shortage of oil, refined oil because there isn't enough crude oil coming in. So once again, we can feed that back, back up the um, the the, uh, the layers fairly quickly and go. Okay, it looks like I need to do more um, oil. Pro or, or I need to bring in more crude oil, and then maybe I'm going to need to do more oil, oil processing over here, or maybe I can get round that by um, by spraying it with paint. We shall see. <laughs> there's a lot. There's uh, there's lots of possibilities there. The other thing I've done actually, and while I while I uh, now I've just remembered it, is I was running a little bit low on power earlier. Um, so I, I'm not anymore. I've got a capac generation capacity of 111 megawatts and can demand of 54. Um, possibly because lots of some of the machines have gone to sleep. I don't know. But this is this is now working much more nicely because I've, I've doubled or I seriously increased the number of um, ray receivers I've got along here. And not only have I increased them here and on my receiver over on the other side of the planet i've also added in two new receiving stations at what was supposed to be about 90 degrees round i didn't do it very carefully though so who knows so it's, there's six six receivers here six here six here and for some reason probably due to an inability to count five here so this is now producing the power about four times now we're now receiving power from the um, from the Dyson swarms about four times as fast as we were before. And if we look at my Dyson sphere, we're still at about 125 percent satisfaction. I don't really know how to, quite how to read that. I think it was we we're, we're using 75 percent of the power, which is the other way of looking at it. Um, there's a bit of a gap there. For some reason, obviously my my gun stopped firing, and I'm not sure why. But we obviously had a throughput problem, something or there. But we've got a nice supply we've got a nice distribution of the solar sails going across here there's lots of them up there we're producing potentially 326 megawatts but i think the uh, what the research i'm doing at the moment is going to yes it's improving ray transmission efficiency there we go so now we'll get a little bit more energy through so now if we have another look at that that we should well that should now drop down again fairly quickly um possibly yeah even further as we're seeing here because we've now got an extra boost to the efficiency of the so whilst we're still producing the same amount of energy here it's taking a lot we're not using we're not wasting as much of it trying to punch the uh the, the power through the atmosphere to get to the ray receiver we've got a lot more being a lot more if, if it is making it through to these receivers so we don't need to push quite as much out of the out of this out of the swarm so yeah we've got plenty of power available available at the moment if i ever start to run low then the answer is start making the sales faster or go in and do the researches in the upgrade section here in order to make them work a bit better so i've got a solar lot sale life here i could use up a thousand of each research pack and that would add another 10 minutes onto the, how long each of those sales lasts for and therefore if i keep firing them out at the same rate it'll give me a boost of goodness knows exactly how long um to have, have how long they'll last for so that'll help a bit and then there's another ray transmission efficiency here i can do that it's a bit more expensive but it gets me a, a, a 10 percent boost to all of the power that comes through so yeah there's lots and lots of um lots and lots of improvements that can be done here um and also at some point there is an upgrade that allows me to make a special lens thing is it is it you no, it's interstellar power transmission. Somewhere, anyway, there is a, a, a thing where you can get a special lens you put into the um, in, into the into these ray receivers. Um, where am I? I'm here. In here, in, into the slot here, a graviton a graviton lens, uh, which looks like that. And when I make when I make start making those and putting them in here, that will get me an extra boost to the amount of power that's received. I'm not quite sure exactly how much, but it will get me some. Oh no! And if you oh, and if you paint them as well, then it makes them even better. Interesting. 
So we've got, yeah, um, I, I don't know how much of a boost it'll get, but it apparently does give you a boost. So that seems that seems very worth doing. And also spraying it with the, uh, with, the with the spray paint will also help that as well. But I think that I think that's everything I've been up to. Um, I can't see anything I've forgotten. I think we're probably pretty complete there. So thank you very much for watching, as always. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and you'll come along and join me on the stream on uh, on Wednesday night at 7:30 UK time, where I shall be going off painting lots more things and just trying to get the science to science a bit better. I'm aware there is another uh, science pack somewhere here again to, to work towards, um, and then once I've got that, I can carry on on the main quest line and start making. An, oh, and there's another science pack up there, so there's there's a bit more to do on the in these areas, but. It's going well so far, and um, I think I feel like I've I've made some good progress. Uh, we'll see. I, I I I remember people saying that one of the I think it was the green science is apparently the big filter in this game, the one where people off a lot of people stop playing. So um, I've got that to look forward to yet. But I'm I'm pretty I, I tend to be fairly stubborn with these sort of games, as you you'll you'll have seen from my um, Angel Bob's run many many years ago with Factorio. So I think that shouldn't be. Um, I, I I suspect I will I will push through that and get and get it done. So that'll be uh, Wednesday. We'll uh, we'll have, have a load of uh, we'll see if we can make a bit more progress then. On uh, Monday night there'll be the Factorio stream with Crastorio 2 and space exploration. We still haven't managed to get ourselves into space, but we've launched some satellites, and that's an important first step. So um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next in that. I I know I've got a list as long as my arm of, of various things that need to be um, fixed and upgraded. Oh yes, I remember. We need to we need to think about defending against a coronal mass ejection and against all the meteors that keep dropping on our planet. So there's um there's a bit of bit of work to be done with that, and that's going to mean I'm going to need to get red circuits and blue circuits built. So uh, yeah, come along on Monday, see me doing that. Don't forget to check out our, our stream sponsor. That's the uh, Trefoil.be. Uh, go to Trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays and to see to see their prices and all that sort of stuff. And and uh, then then use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout to get twenty percent off and make everybody happy. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to come back for the uh, well for everything that's going on on the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.